Hi and welcome to our Good Friday lunchtime stand. As we've been reflecting on the power of the blood of Jesus, I want to share these verses with you from Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. For you have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. You know, I was thinking if Good Friday is only about sins being forgiven, is only about the debt being paid, then there would be no comparison between Jesus' blood and the blood of Abel. You see, the Old Testament covenant was that it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, that blood cried out for blood, so that if there was someone murdered, you took another life to compensate for it. We're told that the wages of sin is death. And so the fact that Jesus had to come and to die on the cross and give his life for us was in order to pay that debt that we owed because of our sin. We're familiar with that. But, you know, when Jesus hung on that cross and said, it is finished, he made that declaration that we no longer were indebted. You know, it says in Colossians chapter two that Jesus died and that we were ourselves once dead in our sins, but that Jesus made us alive again because of his death on the cross. But that wasn't the full stop. You see, the power of the cross lies in the fact that Jesus' blood was also the thing that opened up for us a whole new realm. It opened up for us the realm of our inheritance. And I believe that as Jesus died on that cross and spoke those words, it is finished. He also made a declaration to the heavens above and the earth below and everything in between. And in fact, more so to the principalities and powers that it was finished, that they could no longer rob the people of God of their full inheritance. That from now on, we would be allowed to sit with him in heavenly places, that the way would be made open for us to go and to be with him in paradise. That as we sit and as we rule with him from those heavenly places, that we are, as it says in Ephesians, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. You know, in John 10, 10, it says that the thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy, but that Jesus comes to give life and life in all its fullness. And I believe that Good Friday is good, not just because our sins were taken away, but because God exchanged our sins and our guilt and our shame for so much more. The great exchange was that we received not only mercy, though that we didn't receive the punishment we deserved, but we received more than that. We received grace. We received the things that we did not deserve. And God gave us more. And that more is there for us to enjoy. So in good, on Good Friday, let's not just look at the cross of Christ as a way of forgiving us of our sins, but let's look at it also as the way of benefiting from all that God's gift to us was made possible because of Jesus' death. As Jesus died, it was like he flung a door wide open into heaven and said, here, is the treasure that I want you to enjoy. Treasure of a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Treasure of knowing that we are no longer unworthy, but we are worthy, that we are made worthy because of him. The treasure of knowing that we can hear the voice of God. The treasure that we can go and know that we carry the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That as we step out, we step out with the power that raised Jesus from the dead, now living inside of us through his Holy Spirit. So as we mark this Good Friday again, may we come again and exchange all the rubbish that we want to give him and truly in humility thank him for the gift of freedom from sin, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of that blood that washes away our guilt. But may we not stop there and rob him of his inheritance. For God came because he wanted none to perish, but all to come and have everlasting life. So may we also enter into all that God won for us 
by giving us the sacrifice of his son on the cross. May we receive again that exchange of life for death, of health and healing for sickness and despair, of hope for our sadness. And God, we thank you today that as we come to you, as we come and thank you again for that incredible sacrifice, Father, we also thank you for all that Jesus opened up for us. We thank you for the inheritance that you have held for us. And we want to ask that in this season where we remember the power of life triumphing over death, we ask, Father, that we would claim our full inheritance in you and that we would enter into the fullness of all that you won on the cross. And Father, as we work our way towards Easter Sunday, may we remember that there is the dawning of a new day, even when it feels like darkness is around. For God says, arise, shine, for your light has come. Yes, there's darkness, thick darkness over the peoples, but your light has come. and The glory of the Lord rises upon you today. So Father, as we receive that gift of life, we want to ask that we too, as carriers of that life, may turn the lights on in our communities, everywhere where there's darkness, everywhere where there's death today, everywhere where there's fear and sickness and loneliness. Father, may we turn lights on and welcome others into that glorious inheritance that we have of life triumphing over death. And we ask it, Father, entrusting those that we care for to you today especially those who do not yet know you as Lord and Saviour. Father, we ask that today would be a turnaround season, that they too might enter into that full exchange. And we give you glory, Father, for all that you have won through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we thank you for it. And everyone said, Amen. <laughs>